Hello, hi everybody, and welcome to SNC tonight. Um, hello, if you've tuned in with us online, we're going to start off by singing together and giving praise to our great God. So please stand with us and let's sing. Safely to our 
Good evening, everyone. My name is Maddie, and it is such a pleasure to have you here at church tonight. A particular warm welcome if you are new. It is really awesome to have you here tonight. We have a great service lined up with a lot of different things that we'll be looking into and announcing. Um, Particularly tonight, we'll have Andrew continuing our holiday series, and tonight, looking into uh, the Holy Spirit. And so that will be a great one to be able um, to sit under. We have a few announcements about things that are happening in the life of our church this coming up week. Firstly, we have our Kids Holiday Club coming up. Woo! Coming up on uh, Wednesday to Friday this week. We have about 190 kids registered to come. So it's going to be an amazing event. Mary and I were sitting down during the week and we worked out we're going to need to buy 1,200 pies and sausage rolls to feed these children. Um, So it's going to be a really great week. Um, So it would be great if you can be partnering with us in that by praying, praying for the kids, praying for the leaders um, as we get to go out and do ministry um, to these kids. And so many of these kids um, wouldn't normally come to church and hear about the gospel. So it's a great opportunity in the life of our church. Um, Also this week on Wednesday, we have uh, the Men's State of Origin event, which will be very exciting, the long-awaited deciding match. And it's also a great opportunity to be inviting any of your male mates to come and hear from the gospel as well, as we're having a guest speaker come and talk about why God won't maroon us. So that should be good as well. (laughs) Finally, we have um, a really exciting service coming up near the end of the month. On the 30th of July, we'll be having Dave Jensen come to speak to us. And it's particularly a service focused on us getting to think about how we can bring our non-Christian friends to church. And so the whole sermon and the way that uh, Dave has designed it and planned it is to be one that meets people who don't normally come to church, who don't hear a lot about Jesus, to be able to come and hear about the hope of Jesus and why having a life with him is so valuable. So this would be a great one for you to think about and pray about people that you could be inviting to come and hear the gospel and encounter Jesus. And so Dave's actually recorded a bit of a message for us about that service and how we can be involved. So we'll let that play and after that Connor and Lachlan are going to come up with another announcement. My name is Dave Jensen. I'm really privileged to be coming out to you guys to speak and to preach uh, at your church service on July the 30th. Uh, I'm particularly excited because I'm going to be speaking about Jesus directly to people who don't know Jesus. Uh, I'm going to be speaking about life, the meaning of life and comparing what the world offers Uh, versus what Jesus offers and what Jesus brings and why what Jesus brings is so much better. Um, I promise you I'm going to speak as clearly and hopefully as engagingly as possible. And I'd love to encourage you to partner. Well, let's partner together um, in in prayer. Uh, Would you pray for the the night that people would come? But secondly, um, that you would bring people. I know inviting people along to um, to church can be scary, but a statistic shows uh, done last year that one out of four Aussies would actually respond positively to a spiritual conversation from a Christian. Um, Of course, the problem is we don't know who they are. Um, We have to go through the three rejections maybe to find the one. But I do want to encourage you, um, just like the Lord Jesus, to step out in faith and courage and bring someone along. Uh, I can't wait to see you guys. Really looking forward to it. uh, And I'll catch you soon. Hello. 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 Wait, are they both on? I'll do one. Hello. Um, my name's Connor, and I uh, am the. Oh, there you go. <laughs> uh, my name's Connor, and I'm the youth minister. And part of that means that I get to um, serve alongside a bunch of legends uh, every Friday night during during the school term, uh, and outside of that as well. Um, but one of the things that happens with youth ministry and kids ministry, and, and maybe some other ministries, is we partner with Youth Works, and there's a thing called Year 13. Has anyone ever heard that? Yes, yeah, Cam. Year 13. And what that is, is it's where um, graduates, so year 12, in the next year, 
the year 13, they have an opportunity to go to YouthWorks to receive some kind of formal um, theological education, but also to kind of really dive into ministry and, and get some uh, experience in ministry and, and doing that kind of stuff. And we have a year 13 person here at our church. Does anyone know who it is? Who is it? Lockie Snowball, make him welcome. Come on out the front, Lockie. <laughs> There you go, Lockie. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Lockie White, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you have been doing this year? Because you just graduated last year, and this year you're doing Year 13. What, is, what does that actually mean? Uh, yeah, so I'm Lachlan, for those who don't already know. <laughs> uh, throughout my week, uh, I work. Um, I, on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, I go to, come to Year 13. Um, and on Fridays, I lead at youth. I lead the Year 9 boys. Um, and yeah. Yeah, awesome. And when you're at Year 13, are you there? How, how often are you there? What do you do when you are? Oh, is it on campus? Is it online? How does it? What is it? Ah, uh, yeah, it's at a campus in Loftus. So yeah, nice. Yeah. And when you when you're there, <laughs> what do you do when you're at Loftus? When I'm there, yeah, um, yeah it's just basically in this environment of like-minded Christians, um, yeah, who, uh, yeah, who enjoy love, serving um, God. Um, and yeah, I got to come there to learn more about the uh, just overall just knowledge of um, God and different topics like theology and ethics, as well as um, yeah, how to serve be, serve better as a Christian leader and as yeah, a Christian man. Yeah, awesome, awesome. And obviously, you're part of the youth ministry team. Um, have there been any highlights so far being a youth leader, not a youth kid anymore? Uh, yeah, it's very different uh, to. A youth leader and a youth kid. Um, I think one of my highlights was probably Camp One, obviously. Um, being a leader there for the first time uh, and seeing so many people, so many kids um, just get involved uh, and be so interested in, uh, in everything about what we talked about through e classes. Um, and yeah, and seeing uh, 13 kids uh, commit, rec- uh, commit for the first time or recommit their lives. To God. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome, hey. That, that's, that's a big part of why we all do it, isn't it? See lives saved, see young people saved. And now Year 13, there's a, a Fiji mission trip. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So in September 14th to the 5th of October, uh, we'll be heading to Fiji for short-term mission. Um, so yeah, we'll be given the chance to teach scripture to the um, communities uh, of Fiji uh, in the schools and the orphanages and the churches. Um, and yeah, we're engaging with the locals and Fijian culture. Uh, also doing not just word ministry, but practical ministry, like cleaning and painting and building. Um, and yeah, we're going on what is called a local church mission, or as they call it, LCM, uh, which in groups will be split off into groups and for 10 days we'll be living with these um, churches in Fiji. Uh, and as well as just overall, just serving and encouraging, um, and yeah, learning about like, more about God um, and this community of people who live life so differently to us. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And um, and it, we we would obviously we'd love to figure out how we can support you um, as you go. What are the, some of the things that maybe we could be doing to to support you? Uh, I guess first of all, be praying. Uh, it's very yeah it's something that's I've never really done mission in the um, overseas in a country so different. Uh, so yeah, I'd be praying that, you know, uh, not just me, but the whole of year 13 uh, will be able to make an impact on these uh, lives, these lives of the Fijian people. Um, and yeah, that obviously we won't get sick all over there. Um, but yeah, and that'll just be a whole safe trip. Yeah, nice. And then, is there any other ways? Is there something coming up maybe that, that we can well, get Well, <laughs> we do have one thing. We uh-huh. have a trivia night. <laughs> Woo! Uh, so on the 23rd of July, uh, after s uh, we'll be having a trivia night. Um, the donation or cost will be $20. Uh, kids under 12 come free. Um, and dinner will be provided. Uh, and all the donations and funds will be going towards the mission trip. So, yeah. 
Yeah, awesome. And it's, so yeah, it's on the 23rd of July. It's going to be after after SNC, and anyone here is welcome. Is that that's right? Yes, anyone cool. here is welcome. Sweet, good. Yeah. Um. So I, I went to Fiji recently, and I went for very different reasons. But um, while I was there, I did notice there's. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just wanted to let everyone know that I went to Fiji on holiday. <laughs> but um, even even as I went there, one of the um, one of the really sad things was as I drove from the airport to you know my luxurious resort that we were going to be staying and holidaying in. Um, there are so many people there who who would really need the gospel, really need not the word ministry, of course, but that, that practical side as well of, of helping out and doing those those different things. Um, so if you are if you are free, if you're able, we'd love to see you there. It's going to be happening. The, the date's there. If you want to get your phone out, take a photo or anything like that. And Lockie is also going to be around. He's, he's the one with the luscious red locks um, at the end of the service. Please feel free to come and ask him any questions about Year 13 um, if you want to know more or anything like that. And Lockie, maybe have you got a word for high school people, any of our youth people uh, yeah. about Year 13? Um, for any of those who are in year 12 or still in high school, uh, you doing year 13 is a highly recommend, high recommendation. Uh, I think, uh, personally, for me, doing a gap year was such a, like, such a big thing for me. Like, I mean, I didn't really, jump, really want to jump into any other type of work or uni or TAFE or anything like that. Uh, but I thought, yeah, just doing a gap year and doing this, uh, taking this opportunity uh, was really helpful, so... Oh, yeah. I think if you're, um, if you're thinking about doing Year 13, uh, I recommend checking out their website. Um, I don't know the URL off by head. Uh, I'm sure if you look up Year 13, it might come up. <laughs> uh, Are you sure? It is on my shirt. It is on, no. Oh, no, they're not the URL. <laughs> not the URL. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Or you can come chat to me or any other Year 13 graduates like Jono or uh, Mikhail or... Sam or Liz. Cam. And Cam, yeah. Awesome. All right, well, why don't I quickly pray for you now, um, and then I'll hand over to, I think it's Andrew. Yeah. All right, let me pray for you. Uh, loving Father, we thank you so much for Year 13, Lord. We, we thank you that we live in a part of the world that um, has, has groups, has organizations that do really value um, your word and, and, and want to serve and honor you um, with their time and their resources. Lord, I thank you for Lockie and I thank you for how you have been at work in his life, Lord, and, and through all the different things that have happened in, in, in his youth, Lord, that you have brought him to year 13 where he can um, think on a maybe a bit more of a deeper level about you and, and what your word has to say and, and then also to put, put the things he's learning into practice. Father, we pray for this mission trip to Fiji. We pray for all of you 13 that it would just be a massive blessing to them, Lord God. Um, but as much as it, as they might be a blessing, Lord, that yeah, it would be a blessing to, to the churches that are partnering and, and everyone as we too get to see some of the fruit um, from, from this ministry. So Lord, I pray that you would be with Lockie and that you would give him the things he needs, whether that's wisdom or, or energy or patience. Um, and Father, I pray for us as a church that we'd be able to uh, think about how we can be partnering with him. Um, yeah, and so, Lord, we thank you for year 13, and, and we ask, Lord, God, that they would continue to honour you in all they do. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks thank you. So My name is Andrew. It's, uh, thanks so much, Lachlan, for sharing that. Um, we, this Saturday is actually the Saturday of NAIDOC Week, so it started on Sunday, it goes till uh, tomorrow. And uh, NAIDOC Week has a, a, tr- a deep roots from Christian leaders in the Aboriginal community. And uh, we're actually going to be praying in a minute just for our, our Aboriginal people. But before we do that, we're going to watch a, a, a short video like we did last year. But this video is also done by us. And it's um, a very own Sarah Willits uh, is interviewing a young Aboriginal woman, Tori. And uh, I should let you know, Sarah would love to be here. But she's actually just been in a, um, a couple of weeks in a remote uh, Indigenous community in Canteen Creek in the centre of Australia. Um, but let's, let's watch this interview with Tori. And then I'm going to come up and lead us in prayer. Uh, for these precious people. Um, hi Tori, how are you going? I'm good, how are you? Good, thanks. I'm so glad that you're joining us today. Can you tell us a bit about yourself? Yep, uh, of course. So, my name is Tori Duckett. Um, I'm a proud Dungadi and Rajaru woman from Campbelltown. I'm currently studying at University of Wollongong. I'm loving it. I'm studying PE, uh, four years degree, but I'm in my second year at the moment. Um, and yeah, just got to keep strong and finish it yeah. but yeah I'm really looking forward to finishing my degree yes and being yeah. a PE teacher definitely that sounds great yeah as a young Aboriginal Christian woman is there anything that you would like non-Aboriginal Christians to know I would definitely say uh, don't judge a book by its cover um, so obviously growing up being Aboriginal it has had its hardships and also downfalls but 
I guess by not judging a book by its cover, especially with our skin colour, I feel like growing up in school especially and being a Christian, um, we've always had this negative connotation about, oh, you know, Aboriginal people, they're not smart, they don't have the, you know, skills to be educated. Um, but me, myself, as a testimony, um, I guess, just do what you love. And even though I am Aboriginal, I'm proud of that. Mm. And look at me today, I'm at uni, I'm loving it, and I hope that can be a positive message to other Aboriginal um, people as well, and especially to non-Christians, to prove and I guess motivate them mm. that yes, we can be educated and we can finish our degree with yeah. whatever we want to do, yeah. Um, what is what emphasis do you see in the Aboriginal church that you think a non-Aboriginal church could learn from? Or So, for example, in my church, the MacArthur Indigenous Church, uh, run by my dad, M Michael Duckett, um, within his services he uses a lot of visual aids. So, for example, uh, Indigenous paintings. Us as visual people, um, that's how we learn effectively. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, just learning the different stories, is the best way to learn for us, yeah. Your dad has worked really hard to make your church a really inclusive and um, welcoming place. And I just love that idea of sitting around, being there together. Um, could you tell us how non-Aboriginal Christians have helped support it, your dad and his church and what you guys are doing down there? Definitely. Um, so we've had a lot of different churches uh, support us, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, and Nigel Fortescue, one of the yeah main supporters as well, yeah. Um, helped my dad since day one and just seeing him walk side by side with my dad um, is very purposeful for me, yeah. um, especially my dad being an Aboriginal minister and a non-Aboriginal Christian working together, it really emphasises the reconciliation. Yeah. So yeah, that's the main message um, that my dad portrays within churches. Yeah. Um, just seeing that demonstrated yeah. is a lovely so yeah that's really cool yeah um i want to ask how we like for uh, as part of our church how we can be praying for your church are there any things that you can think of uh reconciliation mm -hmm. um educating the non-aboriginal christians out there uh that reconciliation is still a dream that we mm -hmm. want hope to achieve and work on every day um we can talk about it but it, reconciliation can only happen if we do it. Yeah. So yeah, that's yeah. my hope. Yeah. yeah. Can you tell us about this year's NADOC theme? Yep. All right. So this NADOC theme is get up, stand up, and show up. Uh, so I'm very intrigued by this, is because I guess it's a testimony of I guess Aboriginal Christians for myself. Mm -hmm. So for example, this quote really symbolises me as a Christian woman. Uh, being told from a young age, oh, like the stereotype of Aboriginal people can't go to university. Um, I guess growing up now, I'm a testimony of that is because I'm at uni, I'm at the University of Wollongong, I'm studying what I love, um, and yeah, I'm still here. Even though from the past generation trauma that we have faced in the past, um, People today who I see right now, um, who are a part of the stolen generation, mm -hmm. I see them and I'm like, wow, your story is so powerful. Like, how can anyone fathom that? Yeah. Um, and it's a true message of that. Getting up, they've, they've got up. Yeah. They stand up and they show up. Can you show us the picture on the back of your shirt? Of course, of course. Okay, so from the back of the shirt, we have the cross in the middle. So this uh, represents obviously the cross in two boomerangs. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have two hands at the bottom, both white and black. So this just symbolizes uh, obviously Aboriginal people and non-Aboriginal people coming together under God to bring true reconciliation, working together, um, from the blood of Christ. Tori, can you tell us a bit about how you came to faith? Of course. Uh, so I came to faith when I was eight years old. Uh, I was at Bimbading, so I think that's a pretty sure five hours away, yeah. but it's a beautiful little missionary there. Um, so Bimbading was a place where, full of trees, 
you know, country land. Mm -hmm. um, my dad took me up there and I, I went with there with my family. So it was my mom, dad and I. Yeah. And obviously we got to, I, I think we took our church up there and we got to hear the message of God. I was only little, so I always just wanted to play. Like, yeah. obviously I knew, the, you know, the stories that yeah. were taught in Sunday school. Yeah. Um, but I think at this moment I was like, oh, I was really interested. I was like, oh, like I kept asking dad, oh, what, what is it like to be a Christian? Like, mm -hmm. what do you feel? Like, I was really literal with it. So I was like, oh, if I'm a Christian, I'll feel much more powerful. Yeah. <laughs> like, I thought that's, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I asked Dad heaps of questions. Yeah. And we went up this mountain. And it was just, it was like in the middle of the evening. So yeah, probably after dinner, it was still sunset. So it was a really beautiful night mm -hmm. or evening. Um, Walking up this hill, I asked questions to Dad, mm -hmm. and Dad told me like different stories and his own testimony. And I was like, "Oh, we reached the top of the hill," and I said, "Oh, Dad, like, I think I, I want to give my heart to the Lord." I literally said those words, and you know, Dad was like, "Yeah, of course." Like, he prayed for me. He, you know, um, gave me a Bible verse, and as simple as that, I said, "Oh, I'm ready to, to serve the Lord," even from, though from a young age. Um, I took everything literal, but I was ready yeah. to um, be a Christian mm -hmm. and do the best I can to be a follower of Jesus. So, mm. yeah, That's definitely. Really cool yeah. Yeah, I love it. And I always think back to it, and I'm just like, oh, it's just so literal in my mind. I'm just like, oh, that little hill. Yeah. And yeah. You remember it so clearly. Yeah, <laughs> and just watching the sun, I'm just like, yeah. oh, God really did create that. So, yeah. and He created me. So, I'm just like, nah. I'm ready, yeah, to be a follower of Jesus. So yeah. that's yeah. amazing. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, thanks so much for sharing with us. That's okay. Um, Thank it's you. It's been so great to hear your story. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Let's let's uh, give thanks and let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you that Jesus came for all peoples and that His cross and resurrection calls us from all nations and tribes and languages. And today we particularly want to thank you for those people whom you brought so long ago to this land, the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders. Lord, we particularly want to lift up to you the pain and the hurt and the injustice that they have suffered. And we do ask that you'd bring healing to this nation. Lord, we pray that you'd especially be with leaders and elders in the Indigenous communities, that they might lead with righteousness and integrity. We also pray that you would grant repentance and forgiveness to everywhere where it needs to be given. As we remember NAIDOC week, we want to thank you for those who have got up, stood up and shown up, especially in the name of Jesus. And we want to thank you for the great Aboriginal Christian leaders in the past, like William Cooper, for his courage and commitment to you and your people. And we also want to celebrate and pray for Aboriginal ministries like the MacArthur Indigenous Church in Campbelltown, with Michael Duckett as the pastor, as well as the many in remote uh, and country New South Wales and other parts of Sydney. We, we, write, we now remember the people at Canteen Creek and pray that that place would be uh, blessed as they follow the Lord. Please keep shining Jesus beautifully through these communities. And we thank you for those in our church family and our local community who have connection to the Darawal or Eora or even as a few members of our church, so Camilleroy, as well as those who don't know because family often hidden those things of the past. Help us as a church continue to be a place that fights racist stereotypes and ungodly prejudice. And rather than finding unity around politics, help us to find unity around everyday love and truthful respect that comes from the gospel of Jesus. Lord, right now we want to thank you for Tori, for your work in her life, for her family, for her faith in Jesus. And as Tori said, we need Aboriginal and non-Aboriginals to find reconciliation in the cross through the blood of Jesus Christ. And with this in mind, Lord, bring healing to this land. And help us all to be united and rely on the rock who is Christ. And we pray in his name. Amen. Hi, Mel's my name. I'm going to lead us in um, the rest of our prayers. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, how true it is that we have sinned against you in thought and word and deed. And tonight, Lord, we say that we are sorry for all of our sins and ask that you would give us again our forgiveness. Thank you for Jesus, our Lord and Saviour, who took on the punishment of our sins so that we could be in right relationship with you. A truth, Lord, that we know and a promise for those who are yet to come to faith in you. 
Father, we bring before you troubles in our present age. We pray for the country of Japan, who is in mourning after the assassination of former Prime Minister Abe. We pray you give wisdom to those in authority in that land, Lord, and for the people who are grieving and the churches who are helping people to understand things like this in our world. Father, we pray for Ukraine and the people of that country uh, who continue to suffer under the ongoing assault of Russia's invasive war. Uh, we pray you give wisdom to their president, Lord, and we pray you give courage to other countries in standing up um, for what is happening. Lord, we bring before you those who've been affected by floods in New South Wales, many of them for the fourth time in less than two years. We pray you give them courage. We pray for those emergency services who continue to help those in need. We pray for uh, churches and charities that seek to bring uh, comfort to those who are suffering and who have lost everything. Father, we pray for the country of Sri Lanka that is gripped by economic crisis and ex escalating violence and uh, void in leadership and we pray for wisdom for that country. We pray for the people of that country and Lord that you'd bring healing and that you'd bring peace. We pray too for the US Lord that continues to be gripped by gun violence. We pray for those who've suffered and lost loved ones uh, in the last months uh, in the events that we've read about. But we praise you, Lord, that you are still on your throne and that we can trust you when everything seems lost. We pray that you would bring peace in war and comfort in grief and hope in uncertainty. Father, we pray for leaders around the world. We pray for our Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, and for the relationships with other countries and oversight that he has for our country and pray for all of those in Parliament. We pray for our Premier, Dominique Perrottet, and those that govern um, our state. Lord, we do pray for the UK as they look for a new Prime Minister and we pray that there would be someone who can lead that country at this time. We pray for leaders around the world, Lord, uh, in all the countries that are gripped by strife and unrest, that you give them wisdom. We praise you, Lord, for the way that you enable those who lead us, give wisdom and discernment and humility, strengthen Christian leaders in our world as they stand for what is true and right in your name. Lord, we pray for our mission in the world. We give thanks to you for this church and the fellowship we have here with brothers and sisters in Christ. Father, we pray that you would grow us as servants and proclaimers of the gospel here and around the world. We pray for our pastors, Andrew and Stephen and Punch and Margaret and Mary and Connor. And thank you for Denise and others who minister to us in service. And tonight, Lord, we pray for our overseas partners, Michael and Liz and their children, as they now look forward to leaving Australia on July 19. We pray for them that nothing will stand in the way of them arriving safely in their chosen country of service. We pray that they will be trusting of you each day, knowing that you have the power and love and wisdom to do what is best for them. We thank you for their involvement in our church and others over many years in the music ministry and youth and pray that... They will be a blessing to all they meet in the months and years ahead. Please fill them with all joy and peace as they trust you, Lord, and may they overflow with hope by the power of your Holy Spirit. And we pray that their love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight so that they will be able to discern what is best and be pure and blameless until the day of Christ. We pray for CRE ministry in our schools, Lord. We thank you that is... Um, an opportunity that we still have in what is fast becoming a least reached context. We pray for Holiday Club this week, for the kids who come and for the parents who listen to the stories that these kids will share and particularly for those parents who don't know you. And we thank you, Lord, for the generosity of your people during the Thanksgiving time. Enable us in stewarding these and other resources that you have provided. We praise you, Lord, for the privilege of bearing your name and serving you in this world that we might minister to spiritual and physical needs of those around us. Make us bold in standing for you in all we do. And Lord, finally, we pray for each other. We pray for those who are on holidays at this time. Keep them safe and give them rest. We pray, Lord, for our brothers and sisters who are sick and those who are in hospital. We bring before you those among us who are mourning the loss of loved ones. Care for those who are new. Pray for those who have moved on. We praise you, our Heavenly Father, for the truth that you are the Lord of each of our lives and that in your spirit we are one in Christ. 
Lord, we bring all of these prayers to you, that the blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. I'm going to be reading the Bible for us tonight. Our first reading is from John chapter 14, verses 15 to 27. John 14, verses 15 to 27. If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realise that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Then Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said, But Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus replied, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Our second reading is Romans 8, verses 9 to 17. Romans 8, 9 to 17. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his Spirit who lives in you. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you received does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. Thanks, Maddie. Um, imagine you're, uh, you're reading a book and the author walks in the room while you're reading that book. Imagine you start talking about the book with your friends and start explaining the book to your friends and the author of that book turns up in that midst. Or imagine you're watching a movie and uh, and just over your shoulder the director turns up and watches you watching the movie or when you're gathering with your mates uh, you're there and the director's uh, one of you. Um, I'm more conscious of this than ever that actually that's what we're doing tonight. That's what we're doing as we discuss God's Word and as we discuss particularly His Holy Spirit. We're doing that in the presence of of the author and the subject, the one we're speaking about. So why don't we pray that God would speak to us, God would encourage and strengthen us and minister to us wherever we need, um, whether it be learning more about His Spirit or whether it be putting to practice uh, what He calls on us. Let's pray. Father, thank You so much that uh, You don't leave us alone. 
I thank you for your spirit. We pray that now that as we just unpack a little bit of this today, a little bit of who you are, that you might maybe teach us something that's new or remind us of something that's old, or that you might open up a truth that really ministers to us and refreshes us or challenges us or rebukes us. Father, we pray that you'd take these weak words of mine and and make them yours. And we pray that uh, you'd help us to listen and look at your word and judge what it says and, uh, and see that as the truth. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Well, we're not left alone as orphans. Uh, one of the greatest truths of the whole scriptures um, is that we are not left alone as orphans. For the first followers of Jesus Christ on the night before he died, um, the one who meant everything to them was leaving them. Jesus, who was the way. Jesus, who was their teacher. Jesus, who was the fulfillment of all their hopes of everything that God had planned. Jesus, who was God manifest among them, was going away. And he was telling his disciples, I'm leaving. I'm leaving by being killed, and I'm leaving by going, rising again and going to be with my Father. And it's interesting what he says. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Now, this will be the truth for them, but also for us. Jesus was with his 12, and there were hundreds, maybe thousands, who believed in him at that time or shortly afterwards. But that hundreds and thousands would turn to tens of thousands and millions. And those tens of thousands and millions, and possibly more, would be spread out throughout the world. And neither geography nor history can separate us from Jesus Christ. And he is with us, and we are not orphans. We are not orphaned from Jesus. We are not orphaned from God. Has God forgotten you? You've asked that question? Is God far from you? Ever thought that thought? Can you learn from God? Has God forgotten you? No, because we have his spirit. Is God far from you? If you're one of his people, no, because we're not orphans. Can you learn from God? Yes, because the spirit of truth is with us. But there are different views on the Holy Spirit. Uh, Different views on the Holy Spirit. Is he a force? Is he the force? You know, is he, what's the quote? An energy field surrounding and penetrating all things, holding the galaxy together. Thank you. (laughs) One Star Wars nerd in the room. Um, Is he an aspect of God? You know, the Bible talks about God has the mouth of the Lord, has spoken. The hand of the Lord has reached out. The arm of the Lord was extended. And is the Spirit just another aspect of God that we particularly want to focus on? Is, Is he a feeling? Is he a way of talking about our Godward intuitions, our Godward emotions? Is he a ghost? I don't know if you've, if, if you've been a Christian for a long time, you might have heard that people talk about, used to talk about the Holy Spirit, and sometimes they talk about the Holy Ghost, because the old uh, English Bible uh, had the translation of ghost, because ghost literally meant breath in, in Middle English. It meant spirit. It meant soul. I mean, you might have heard the expression, someone has given up their ghost. It just means they've given up their breath, given up their spirit. And so when, it's, when, we, when we used to talk about the Holy Ghost, it just means the, the, the same thing, the Holy Spirit. Uh, who, who is the Holy Spirit? Is he a force? Is he a feeling? Is he just one aspect of God? What does the Bible say? Well, the triune God, one God in three persons. In the Old Testament, there's a consistent belief in one God. But that one God is revealed uh, in his simplicity, but also his complexity. There are mentions of spirit in the Old Testament right at the beginning in Genesis 1, when God made the world, the spirit of the Lord was hovering over the waters. And, And we see more and more promises of the spirit as the Old Testament develops. And when Jesus 
when God was clothed in flesh and dwelt among us, we see the full extent of God. And Jesus, in a sense, opens up who God is from the inside out. All human understanding of God is from the outside. It's seeing God as who he is on the outside. But Jesus shows us God on the inside, so to speak, and draws us into the inner life of our creator, our judge, and our savior. Let me just show you three pictures of our triune God which will show us what it's like. Today's a little bit different. Like, like, like last week, we're, we're doing a talk about God. It's not just a one passage, but trying to think through. And today, we're thinking of the Spirit of God. Um, three pictures. One of them is the baptism of Jesus. When Jesus was baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was open, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven saying, You're my son, whom I love with you. I'm well pleased. Here you have the Son of God. You have the Spirit. And you have the voice of the, his father who says, you are my son. You've got, you got the, the triune God at this moment being revealed. The father commending the son, the son obedient to the father, and the spirit being poured out from one to the other. At, at the other end of Jesus' ministry at the Great Commission, when Jesus gathered his disciples and he, he gave us a purpose Uh, He told us that we're going to be missionaries, not by occupation, but by preoccupation. And he said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you, and surely I'm with you to the very end of the age. We have the Father gives the Son all authority, and the Son is going to be with us forever. How is he going to be with us forever? By his Spirit. And what's the content of what they're baptizing in? In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. One God in three persons. And even one of the greeting, even the simplest thing, a greeting in the church contains this truth. This was one of the old greetings of the church that's been said for thousands of years and it's in the Bible. It says, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We worship, we call on, we follow, we depend on, we trust on the one God in three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But who is the Spirit? It's an important identity. We've already seen the Spirit is called many things. The Spirit is called the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth. We've seen He's he's called another advocate. And Jesus says, I won't leave you as orphans... I will come to you. And somehow Jesus will come to you in his spirit. Well, let's look at the, the second reading from Romans chapter 8. I'll just put this on the screen. But if you have it in front of you, that's probably the one to keep open. Romans chapter 8, he says this. You, however, just look out for where he talks about the spirit of God. You, however, are not in the realm of flesh, but in the realm of the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God lives in you, And if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. There's a lot to unpack there, but just simply look at the names that are describing the Holy Spirit. Notice all the words used of the same person. I think there's six different ways the Spirit of God is referred to. If the Spirit of God lives in you, if you have the Spirit of Christ, if Christ is in you, if the Spirit and the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus and His Spirit. You see, the way the Holy Spirit is described is the Spirit It's in three verses, six different ways. Um, The Spirit can be described as the Spirit of Jesus Christ. It can be described as the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus Christ. It can be described as the Spirit of God. Um, I would, it it can be described as the Holy Spirit. I would actually encourage you to talk about the Spirit like this. I I think it's actually really, really helpful uh, to talk about the Holy Spirit, not just using the word Holy Spirit, but talk about the Spirit of Christ as well as the spirit of the one who raised Christ. 
I think it's very important for us to use the, to keep using his words, the spirit of God, the spirit of Jesus, the spirit of Christ. Because in a sense, the Holy Spirit is the one who is the bond between the Father and the Son. He is the one who unites them and the one whom they both pour out into the world. The, the Father sends his Son to save the world. The Son obediently responds to his Father and saves the world. And the Holy Spirit takes the works of the Father and the Son and applies it to the world so that people can actually be saved and come to the Lord for saving faith. They work together. Interestingly, when the Holy Spirit is poured out on the day of Pentecost in the New Testament, that great first day of the church, and they see the work of the Holy Spirit, how does Peter explain it? He gives a sermon about the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. That death could not hold him down so that God has raised Jesus to the right hand of the Father and he has poured out the promised Holy Spirit for all who would come to him. And there's a beautiful promise that anyone who receives Jesus will receive the Spirit. Now just as a reminder, this talk is not just working through one passage. It's the truth about God and his Spirit. And if you want to find out more about putting this together, um, I'm going to put a plug in like, uh, like Connor did last week. Um, in third term, on Sunday afternoons, there's going to be a, um, a, a PTC course run by um, Bill Walton, who's a student minister who comes on Sundays. If you are interested in finding out more about truths about God and thinking a bit more deeply about these things, uh, then I encourage you to contact the church office, contact me, um, if, if on, on emails, we'll put this out. But if you want to come along, uh, this is an opportunity to do a correspondence course. I think it's fortnightly. So it's a five-week um, five uh, commitment. But it's uh, over, the, over the 10 weeks, every fortnight. Anyway, yeah, that's, a, that's a plug. Let me just put out a, a bigger plug, not about that, but about a verse from the Bible that says this, Watch your life and doctrine closely, Persevere in them because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. Now, that was written to a church leader, okay? Now, usually when we speak to church leaders, what we do is we say to church leaders, you got to watch your life because that matters. Because that's the big emphasis we want to say is don't be a hypocrite. Watch your life. Keep growing. Not be perfect, but keep growing in your life. But there is another aspect I think that we have to also emphasize, which is watch your teaching. Watch your doctrine. And I don't think it's just for church leaders. I think they're meant to be models for everyone. I think we all need to be watching our life and our doctrine closely. We've got to watch how we live and what we believe. If God's word is crystal clear on it, you be crystal clear on it. If God's word's hazy, you be hazy. If God's word doesn't speak on it, you don't need to have an opinion on it. You can just, well, you can have an opinion on it, but you don't actually have to hold on to it. Hold on to the things that are gospel truth with a firm, closed fist and let other things go. Hold on to them loosely. Be flexible. God's truth is a gift to be passed on to the next generation, which we've got to come in our lives, but also our doctrine. You're a kids ministry leader. Watch your life and your teaching carefully. You're a youth leader. Your life matters, but so does your doctrine. You're a growth group leader. That's the same. You're a parent. You aspire to be a parent. You, you watch those things. You, you want to share your gospel with someone around you. Watch both. Well, last point, just to wrap up some things, and particularly to think, what does the Holy Spirit do? Oh, I think he's a vital part of our life following Jesus. There's much to say here. There's so many things you can say what he does. But let me just say these five brief things. One, he lives in us. In, these are from the, just from the five points from the passages we had read out. He lives in us. Jesus said, he lives with you and will be with you. Romans said, for those who follow Jesus, the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you. Like in the Old Testament, the glory of God came and lived in the temple. For us, the glory of God, his spirit, the spirit of God comes and lives in you. Which means that we use ourselves, our body, our time, our gifts, whatever we have, in his service. Um, there used to be a bunch of uh, Christian weight loss um, books. One of, the, one of the stupidest ones was called um, 
more of him, less of me. Have you heard of that one? Okay. <laughs> and then someone came back with a, a reply to it, which is, no, I'm making more room for the Holy Spirit. Okay. <laughs> but you know what? That, that stuff is irrelevant. It's not about that. It's not about that. that that's not with the, the, being the temple of the Holy Spirit, but it means using yourself, using all you have in the service of the Lord. He lives in you. It's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God. Secondly, we're not left as orphans. Now, now this was originally going to be just a point at the bottom of my talk, but I just thought, you know, I've got to put it, I've got to put it at the top of my talk because it's so important for us. This is not a dry doctrine. This is a truth. The Holy Spirit is with us because we are not alone. Jesus said, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. See, he says, I'm going to send my Holy Spirit. And what does that mean? It means I will come to you. Jesus, who bodily is not here on earth, can make a promise that says, I will surely be with you to the very end of the age. And he keeps that promise by his Spirit. It's by the Spirit of Jesus Christ in us, which is a truth. This, we are not left as orphans. is a truth we can take when we are on mission for Christ. We can say, you know what, I go into this place and I'm not alone. I go in in the name and the power of Jesus Christ. The, um, I, I think it's, it's the way you, you, even you're sharing the gospel on a, on a Saturday night after church with some mates. You're not alone. God's with you. Don't worry too much about what you say. God will give you the words. You keep trusting in him. Secondly, in temptation, he's with us. We're not orphans. He, he, he doesn't abandon us at those moments, but he gives us a way out. There's always a way out. And, and, and there's, God is there. You need to turn to him in those moments of weakness and ask him for strength. And in our grief and pain, he is there too. We are not alone. I reckon um, as a society, we are becoming hundreds of years of individualism. We are reaping that completely and utterly now. And people are victims of individualism gone crazy. And there are many, many people who are lonely. Even people who have many friends are deeply lonely. But we are never alone and we are not orphaned. We have God's Holy Spirit. We are not orphans. We're not left as orphans. He gives us new life towards God. If you want to read that passage in Romans 8, um, I wish I could speak on the whole thing, but it's all about new life in God. Verse 9 says, You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but the realm of the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God lives in you. And there is new life physically that will become because of the Spirit. Verse 11, If the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of His Spirit who lives in you. We have a new life towards God, but even our physical life will be made right by the Spirit of God. And, and this gives us confidence, nothing. There is no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus, and there is no separation for us as we come to Christ Jesus. There is confidence that we have of a new life towards God, but it also gives us purpose. Verse 12 says, Therefore, brothers and sisters, and I reckon we're already thinking this. If the Holy Spirit has given you new life towards God, what are you thinking? What's the logical step? Verse 12 says, therefore we have an obligation. Do you think in that? If, if the Holy Spirit has given me life, therefore we have an obligation not to the flesh to live according to it. But if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But, but if by the Spirit you put to deed to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. The obligation is to no, not live for the self and the sin, but to live for the Spirit of God in you and put to death those things that take you from God. He also gives us a new mind towards God. Um, remember, um, th this, is, uh, this is true for all those who claim the name of Jesus. If you, you follow Christ, he promises to give you of his Holy Spirit. And, and they'll have the spirit of Christ living in them. Someone, you can say, hey, hey um, a relationship with, with Jesus is not a historical relationship, okay? Yes, we know things about Jesus from history and from the Bible. 
but we know Jesus because of the Spirit of Christ in us. Um, the book of Romans actually starts off saying we're all under God's re- judgment. And we've rejected God and God hands us over to a depraved mind and then hands our bodies over to actions that will just sort of um, implode on ourselves. But with Christ's death and resurrection, there's a new way of forgiveness and coming back to God. And our minds need to be renewed. And that's exactly what he says here about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is renewing our minds. Verse Romans 8.5 says, Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires, but those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. The set, you know, be, led, you know, be led by the Spirit, be full of fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is, is, is love and joy and peace and patience and goodness and kindness and self-control and all these things against which there's no law. And, and we, we are to be filled and have our minds set on what the Spirit wants. And lastly, he gives us comfort and assurance that we're adopted as kids. I began with saying we're, we're not orphans. Let me finish by saying, and we're not in the no man's land either. We're not just not orphans, but have it okay. We're, just, we're not orphans, and we're actually adopted as God's children. And we have the same spirit that God poured out into Jesus Christ in us. Uh, Romans 8.14 says this. If you have a Bible, you could follow this part. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. How good is that? The spirit you receive does not make you a slave so that you live in fear again. And Christians, we don't need to live in fear. Too much fear in this world. Too much fear. Let's be different. Rather, the spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we're God's children. If we're children, the heirs, heirs of God, co-heirs with Christ. If we share in his sufferings, in order we may share in the glory. We are children of God if we have his spirit. You know, what it says, Abba, Father, that's, that's the reason it says that the prayer that Jesus prayed probably is one of the most intimate prayers the night before he died where he prayed with sweats like blood that came out and he said, Abba, Father, if there's any other way, take this cup from me. That's where Jesus says, Abba, Father. Abba is the, 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 the language, the Aramaic word for daddy, dad, father. And he's saying the spirit of Jesus that calls out to God as dad is the spirit that's in us. And the spirit that he testifies that you are a child of God. And that you can know that, you can sing that, you can say that, you can dare that. In many religions in the world, in fact, most religions in the world, you become a, a slave to God. You become someone who, who, who could barely come near the Lord. But for, for us in Christ, we're actually adopted as children of God. And we can call God our Father. I, 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 um, he loves our prayers. I actually find it helpful to sometimes reflect on what others have written before. I, I, um, I, I hope I don't freak one out here, okay? But I don't want to freak you out. I want to encourage you to do something. If, if you want to think, it's actually really helpful to reflect what other Christians have written before. I, I love a thing called the Heidelberg Catechism, which is a 500-year-old statement of what Christians have believed. And it's one of the most heartwarming of the bunch. It's not like a nasty, critical one. It's, it's a heartwarming one. And let me just, I said, okay, I've, done my, I've worked out my talk, I've looked at the passage. Let me just show you what it says. We can put that up. What do you believe work concerned the Holy Spirit? And look how beautiful this answer is. And there's scripture proofs underneath. First, that the Spirit with the Father and the Son is eternal God. Yeah. And second, that the Spirit has given also to me so that the Spirit is given also to me, so that th- through true faith, he makes me share in Christ and all his benefits. He comforts me, and he will remain me with, with me forever. Um, there's a lot more you can say, but what a beautiful statement of what the Holy Spirit does for us. Remember what we've seen. He is equally God, 
And he's described, the way he's described is important. He can be described as the spirit of Christ, the spirit of the one who raised Christ, the spirit of God, the spirit of the Holy Spirit. Remember that we're, what we're seeing, he lives in us. We're not left as orphan. We have new life toward God. He gives us a new mind towards God. He gives us comfort and assurance. But in all this, this it's not like we just sit back and do nothing. We, we actually have an obligation to live according to the spirit and not according to the flesh. We have, we have an obligation to live as people who recognize that the Holy Spirit lives in them. To live as people who are confident to say that I am not an orphan, but a child of God. To live as people who, do you know what? I think for Christians, prayer is as natural as calling out to our, heavenly, uh, to our earthly parents. And I think for Christians, it's not that we need to pray. We need to work out what are those things that's stopping me praying. Because the Spirit of God is in you and He wants you to pray and call out Abba Father. And it's just things around you or other things that distract you from the work of the Holy Spirit. And so get rid of those things that are stopping you praying. It's a natural thing for a Christian to pray and to call out Abba Father, to call out on God for things. But it's also great comfort, isn't it? To know that Jesus said to us, I'm not leaving you as orphans. And when he sends the Holy Spirit, he says, I am coming to you. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for the amazing work of the Holy Spirit. And thank you that we are not alone. Thank you that he teaches us all things, reminds us about Christ. He calls us to put to death those things that are distracting us from you. And he calls, he testifies within our own spirit that no matter how rubbish we feel, no matter what's going on, no matter what we've done, if we are Christ's people, then we are children of God. And Father, particularly that we can go through all things knowing that if we suffer with Christ, we will also rise with Christ. Father, help us to live according to the Spirit, to, to, to keep in step with the Spirit, to produce fruit of the Holy Spirit and to love the work, to love the person of your Holy Spirit. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you, Andrew. Um, we're going to spend some time singing together, and I think definitely reading that um, little section in verse 15 in Romans 8 of... Um, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. And I think um, now is a beautiful time that we can all stand together as children of God and cry out to our great Father in praise. So please stand and join. Give. 
Well, that brings us to the end of our service tonight. Uh, Please stick around and feel free to mingle and we'll have some food coming out in a moment. If you've got dinner plans, let each other know. It would be great to be able to continue to enjoy that fellowship with each other into the night. Um, Just popping up on the screen in a moment, you'll see our offertory details. If you're just a regular member of our church, um, don't forget that that's available for you as a way that we can continue to worship our great God. And so I just wanted to finish up by encouraging you with what Andrew said, that neither geography nor history can separate us from Jesus. And we can know that because we have the assurance of his spirit, this spirit of God that raised Jesus from the dead. And so now we can have this personal and intimate relationship with God. And so I'm going to finish up by praying to God now. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this night, for this time that we can come to be able to worship you, to praise you and to sit under your word. 
I thank you, Father, so much for your spirit um, that promises that we are not orphans and we are not alone. Um, So I thank you, Father, for this relationship that we can have with you, um, a relationship with a God that knows us deeply um, and that loves us unconditionally and showed that through Jesus. And so I pray, Father, that that would be something that continues to encourage us and to spur us on as we seek to live for you. And so, Father, I pray that you'd be with us tonight, be with us in our conversations and in the food that we eat. I pray, Father, that we would be a people that continue um, to strive to bring glory to your name. Amen. Have a good night.